Uh, but Phil Foglio, we can we ch chat about him for a bit. Uh, let's see, what do we got? A lot of cartoony stuff. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I like uh, Apathy. That's a pretty fun one. Let me pull up the card here. Uh, yeah, he seems uh, he seems pretty apathetic about uh, all this craziness going on around him. Let me uh, cut this in a little closer so we can chat about it. Uh, a lot of goblins and monsters and other things, and he's just having a beer. No, nope, no, nope, that's... Um, let's see, what are the fun... Oh, bee stings, huh? Oh, man, these uh, definitely had some fun... Uh, fun times with his artwork. As I was going to say, like... A lot of the newer stuff is all super hyper realistic and it looks like it was done by CGI pretty much but this stuff is what originally started out in magic and yeah they <laughs> this card is not really a good card anyway that's why it was probably a, a portal card because it's the what they originally came out with is your beginners cards um, nothing was uh, instant speed was all creatures and sorceries and this guy cost three and a green to do two damage so now we can do that for a single red that's pretty pretty nuts um let's see what other one cloud pirates this is a wacky one cloud pirates now these seem angry i'm not sure if this uh Definitely would fly in some of the modern times, <laughs> and but uh, yeah, that's uh, a cooperation. Actually, I think I had uh, I, I I never really used this one because I never completely understood banding. Uh, the I know there was something related to do with blocking, but I think it got really confusing, and that's why no, it really didn't survive beyond that because of the of the the confusion that a lot of it caused. Uh, dream cash. I think I know dream cash. I've heard that was probably used in some serious uh, some deck at one point, but it almost seems like Phil Foglio likes his little uh, um, his beer mugs there. So it seems like uh, that first guy had his beer mug, and the other guy's got this beer mug. <clears throat> yeah, they uh, they do have. Uh, we talked about. Um, yeah, some of those, uh, some of the high fantasy looking stuff was uh, pretty good. Um, let's see, you had mentioned uh, Orcish Librarian there. That, that's uh, down here in the O's probably. Um, doo -doo -doo. I like this one. For, I, I probably in my entire life bought maybe five packs of uh, Unglued, but uh, this was in one of them. And I never really got to use it, but it's a uh, it's kind of fun with his uh, the silly artwork from that. <clears throat> the uh, wonder if he did did uh, now it says here he did the one of the Mistress factories uh, in and uh, grouped up with uh, Kaja for it. So I wonder if they did any of the other Mistress art. It seems like they're the only, they they only did the, I think this is the fall, uh, artwork, because it's got the the red uh, leaves. But uh, yeah, there were four different f seasons for the uh, the Mishra's factories, and that that was uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Now sleight of hand, I've no I've seen that in uh, in many decks here. The, the original artwork, uh, this is from the starter set. Uh, definitely the sleight of hand is pretty sweet. I know there's a lot of uh, eternal format blue decks that played sleight of hand. And then, always, actually, where, where's the, uh... oh, there we are. Here's the Orcish Library. I'm like, we already passed the O's. I'm like, I thought we, <clears throat> nice, all four seasons. Here's your Orcish librarian. He's enjoying his uh, his library book, eating some library with his library paste. 
That's just silly. Who would do silly guy? Um, it's one of the original artworks for uh, Sulphurous Springs in the Ar Ice Age times. Ice Age was a wacky set. Um, I was reading, actually I was listening to, uh, I probably should get back into it again. Um, uh, what is his name? I'm totally blanking on his name. Mark uh, that does, basically the, the main head designer for uh, Magic the Gathering. Uh, he does a podcast, or I think he did, but I'm sure if he still does, I'll have to check it out, uh, of <clears throat> the, basically he calls it, uh, yeah, Mark Rosewater. Why did I blank on Rosewater? That's a unique name. Um, I don't know if he still does his podcast for, um, called it Ride to Work, where basically he tried to jam pack everything in just talking to himself while he drove to work because he had about a 30, 40 minute drive from his house to uh, headquarters and he'd get a, through a lot of stuff that uh, would be pretty cool and he talked about how Ice Age um, was really popular for its time but then it uh, it it didn't fit nicely and when they started moving towards the three set block uh, structure so that's actually why they went back and did the cold snap set because technically the Cold Snap belongs with Ice Age uh, for their set. Um, little side uh, side note there. But yeah, check them out, the, the podcast. Is, yeah, they probably even still has the old uh, series up if it's not around anymore. Uh, but it's called uh, Drive to Work. Uh, there's another silly one from the Unglued set, the uh, Urza's Science Fair Project. A lot of, uh, you roll a uh, six-sided die, and depending on what it does, your creature gets something. So that's uh, pretty wacky. But yeah, that's what uh, that's what um, that's what Phil Fogli Foglio has done, and uh, a lot a lot of cartoony stuff. And yeah, I have not too much in recent times. So it doesn't seem, I think the newest set that it looked like he did anything for was, uh, wow, probably like Ice Age Weatherlight. Because a lot of his, a lot of his stuff is all Ice Age, Alliances, Portal. So I, I'm not sure if he's doing much in the way of uh, magic art anymore. That's too bad. But yeah, I think they, they're starting to move towards the, the hyper-realistic stuff. And so it, uh, well, some of this cartoony, silly stuff, even though it does have a place, uh, that they're really getting moving away from that. 